Hello and welcome to another episode of Loxone Explained, the video series for all tech enthusiasts, Loxone partners, and those looking to become automation installers. Today we're talking about energy management, a topic that has a lot of potential in the world of automation. And if you missed our last episode on the topic of automated garden irrigation, just click the little I up here. And if you want to make sure you never miss another episode of Loxone Explained, Subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Now, let's take a look at some of the amazing possibilities for energy management with Loxone. Energy management is a combination of measures. It intelligently balances the supply and use of energy. And a big part of energy management can include configuring a system that focuses on making the best use of self-produced energy. The Loxo mini server and the specially developed energy manager function block help you achieve this very task. You can use the function block to control up to 12 electrical devices. So if more energy is being produced than is currently being consumed, rather than this energy going back into the grid, it can be intelligently directed to the selected devices based on load and priority. Of course, there are some devices that you may want to switch on immediately, like a washing machine, for example. And that's what the trigger inputs are there for. By using these, you can change priorities quickly and for a limited time, and therefore switch on a device immediately. And now, let's take a look at the function block in detail. When inserting the block or after double-clicking on it, the settings window is opened. Now you can add the electrical devices that should be activated automatically. These devices are assigned priorities, with one being the highest priority and 12 being the lowest. If there is excess power at input AIP, the energy manager switches on as many devices as possible starting with the highest priority. The activation period is the time it takes to prepare a device before it starts running. If the device is a washing machine, for example, the activation period is how long in seconds would be required to select the washing cycle. The device is kept on for at least the minimum runtime. The minimum off time is how long the devices need to be off before it powers back on again. If a minimum runtime per day is specified, the corresponding devices are activated for this duration either before sunset or at the user-defined time, even if there is no surplus or self-produced energy on this day. If no more surplus energy is available, the function block switches the devices off again. A device that has already reached its minimum runtime is then turned off to give other devices the opportunity to be activated. With the end of minimum runtime per day variable, you can define the time by which the minimum runtime per day must be reached for example, by sunset or by a user-defined time. The switch on power specifies how much surplus power must be available for an output to switch on for a device. However, please be careful here. This variable does not correspond to the switch on current and the resulting switch on power of the electrical device. And last but not least, this is the power rating of the load for the respective device. You can find this, for example, on the device's sticker or in the device manual. As soon as all values are filled in, and the outputs connected to the function block, the only things that are missing are the inputs. With the inputs TR1 to TR12, as well as the input AIT, devices can be started manually. If these inputs are triggered with a short pulse of less than one second, the input remains active until the minimum runtime per day is reached. If an activation period is configured for a device, the corresponding trigger input must be confirmed before it can be automatically turned on later. As mentioned before, the device, in this case a washing machine, can be switched on just long enough for a washing cycle to be selected and started. After the activation period has ended, power to the washing machine is stopped if there is no surplus self-produced energy available. That means if you load your washing machine in the morning and set the program during the activation period, you can leave it be until the energy manager intelligently resumes power to the washing machine, as soon as there is enough surplus power. If a pulse greater than one second triggers the input, the device will be powered until a falling edge is present at the input. The minimum runtime is not taken into account here. In order for the energy manager to be able to perform its work at all, it has to know how much energy is currently being produced or consumed. Therefore, the current power is added to the input AIP. The value is positive if more power is being consumed from the grid and negative if more power is being self-produced than what is needed. The AQR output shows the remaining surplus energy once all possible devices have been switched on. This can be used to charge an intelligent battery, for example. The input AIB must be connected to calculate the residual energy output. This was just a quick look at the energy manager function block. The energy management of any building 
is always unique and of course must be adapted exactly to the conditions of that specific building, in line with local regulations and your knowledge as an installer. As with all automation, you can add additional logic to help meet the individual requirements of that project. Have you already implemented smart energy management in one of your projects? Then let us know in the comments below. We're looking forward to seeing how you've done things. If you want to make sure you never miss another episode of Loxone Explained Again, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. That's all for now, though. Thanks for watching.